Gig Gab, episode 410 for Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians. Our sponsors for this episode include factormeals.com slash giggab50, where you can use code giggab50 to get 50% off. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, I am Mike Schulte. Hey, Mike, thanks for coming on the show this week and talking to us, man. Well, thanks for having me. And, and listen, I want to be the first of many. I know you're going to have a lot of guests. I want to yeah. be one to, to just thank Paul for everything that he's given over the years. And I, I know what having a podcast is and trying to stay on that schedule and trying to get content out and moving your life around. It is it is a hard thing to do. And, and just so many props to you for keeping going and also Paul for just everything he's done. And I can't Absolutely. wait to hear him when he comes back and he's all refreshed and he's like, yeah, let's go, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to yeah. be. No, he is. He's going to be totally stoked to come back. I, I Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to that, too. And I'm stoked to have you here. When we had you on the show a couple of months ago, I knew that the conversation <laughs> needed to keep going. I also knew at that moment, which you did not, uh, that uh, Paul gotcha. was going to be leaving. And it was like, aha, all right. <laughs> so that's why you're like, hey, we'll save all the gear talk. Paul, Paul doesn't want to talk about gear talk. Well, I know we'll do this again. Let's talk about gear then. <laughs> See what I mean? Now, yep. Now you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. No, it's They're great. not well, about drums. Yeah, well, we'll gear out a little bit about uh, drums in, in, in a bit, but I want to talk about, you and I both had some gigs over the last week, uh, New Year's gigs, and I want to talk about that. Uh, you, you go ahead and start. What 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 did you play over the past week here? Yeah, it's the old infamous uh, New Year's Eve gig, right? Where yeah. I, I I'm I'm at the point of my life where I I like if I didn't play on New Year's Eve, I wouldn't go out because I just New Year's Eve is always just such a weird night. It's and amateur bummer. night. It's it's amateur night and it's just ne it never lives up to anyone's expectations of nope. what they want the night to be. Nope. And so unless unless we're getting paid very well and playing a a very professional show, we we kind of tend to turn it down. But we got asked by a casino here in Iowa that you know we don't do the clothes or we don't do the casino floors anymore. We we did that one time like six years ago. We said yeah, never yeah. again will we ever play a casino floor and being be an employee of the casino and decibel readers and no we will never do this again but uh, <laughs> a casino like this has a closed door room with like a, a big, theater yeah it's a big stage and it, yeah. they can do ticket events there there's nice. no smoking in there it's like oh it's its own it's its really? own venture and you know is there smoking was, in the rest of the casino oh yeah smoking yeah okay. everywhere, but you can smoke you. in this room here oh that's and, nice and it, was, it was a great thing right you know it's it's uh it's a casino they got lots of money so they met all of our production requirements they let us bring in our video wall all of our team a great opener huge stage they handled everything and it was it was awesome man we only played like an hour and a half oh that's and, great and and what? had great yeah great hospitality i i love playing casino shows like that but i also know if anyone else out there's listening casinos are sometimes hard to deal with they have oh. their own protocols and even is just your, getting in the building for security is like this is harder than anything we've done you know is your casino uh on native american land this one is not no oh, okay because i've i've the only casinos i've played at yep. uh, really i've only played at one and it's foxwoods down in connecticut and that is uh, on native american land and so you know you've left the united states oh yes you when have. you're there <laughs> and it is made abundantly clear like it's actually not abundantly clear until you're sort of behind the scenes yep oh and yeah that's, when you get back in, in the maze yeah. behind the building yep yeah and that's when it's like oh yeah because i like parked my car in a spot where you're really not supposed to and it was like because yep. load in and load out was kind of a pain in the neck and oh yeah they came to us and they're like you have to move your car and it was like yeah okay and then it was like no, you don't understand. Like no, the tribal elders are coming and it's like, I'm going to move my they... car now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it was a great gig though. Like I, I think they had, I think they sold about 800 tickets. Nice. Just short of a sellout. Um, big, big crowd. People had a great time. And then, you know, I was home 
I was home. Uh, I'm an hour away from there, so I was home by like two, two o'clock, something like that, two thirty, uh, which is great. Usually, we're far enough away where we're staying in hotels, but I'm like, I'm going home. So it was, it was great. a great. Did you? So you had a New Year's Eve gig too? So I, I did. I had two gigs, believe it or not. So actually, you, Jeez. yeah, you had, um, <laughs> you had posted online something that's interesting to me. Would you have called your New Year's Eve gig? New Year's Eve 2023 or New Year's Eve 2024? You, you really want to get into this, all I, right? I, no, I absolutely do. And I'm going to warn you, I am setting you up here. But but go ahead. What, okay, what would no, you have called this gig? Well, yeah. and let's just let's just go ahead and let people know that if I, I kept seeing it this year, it felt like a Mandela effect moment all of a sudden where I'm like, I thought we were all on the same page here. But this year I kept seeing bands saying, come to our show, New Year's Eve 2024. And I was like, what? New Year's Eve is is 2023, like New Year's Day and the new year is 2024, but New sure. Year's Eve is 2023. That's how I've always done it. That's how I've always seen it. And all of a sudden I'm seeing these bands say 2024 and I even put out a couple of polls and overwhelmingly people thought that New Year's Eve 2023 was the correct way to say it. If you're if you're saying Eve, yes, 2023, but there are still a lot of people there that that said no it is 2024 and i'm a 2023 guy so yeah so i did both i played <laughs> uh new year's eve 2023 gig i i did two shows last week at this theater near me that i that i play at on christmas night at midnight wow. i played rocky horror we did the same thing on cool. new year's eve so because yes. it starts at midnight that's a 2024 that is, gig that is and that is just a new year's 2024 that's correct say eve it's we i didn't know that's new years of 2024 <laughs> that's right however in between right in between the t the christmas night at midnight gig which really is the the morning of the 26th and then the morning of the first doing rocky horror in between we did five shows of hedwig and the angry inch on the wednesday so the 27th through the 31st wow so i had an 8 p.m downbeat for hedwig we did that then kind of rolled the stage over a little bit. Thankfully, my drums were like the one thing that didn't have to move. Which nice. Was, yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then, at, you know, midnight downbeat, because you can't start that gig late. Ooh. You've got to do a countdown, man. <laughs> <No>. like, <laughs> yeah, and people have phones now. It's not like the oh, old yeah. days where they're like, we'll trust whatever you say. Whatever you say is fine. No, no, <laughs> everybody knows what time it is. So, yeah, so I played two gigs in the same place. Uh I uh, got paid twice, which is and much. you didn't and you didn't move anything too. No. And that's that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I loaded in for Christmas and then loaded out after wow. after you, you know the 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 rocky thing the other night. So I I too got home at about actually I was at about three thirty a.m. But that's not bad. No, no, it's totally fine. Technically, I, technically the same time we were arriving home, but just different time zones. You know, fair. What I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Go. Yeah, but yeah, the gigs went well. New, New Year's on uh, a Rocky on Christmas was a bit of a disaster. Uh, sound we didn't have the normal sound engineer in the theater. We had someone else that I mean they were doing their 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 level best, but they were fed to the wolves. They like yep. they had to tune the room because they it, it wasn't like this was the fourth show that had been yep. done. They had to get everything set up and get it rolling, and we tried to help, but it was it was a it was not great. Do you feel, do you ever get, um, do you ever get anxious when that kind of stuff happens? Like when you're on stage and, and they're, you're ready to sound check and, and you're noticing that front of house is having problems. Like that makes, that makes me so anxious Same. when I'm on stage just going, Oh no. Like, cause you just want to believe that everything's you good out there. You got your in-ears in. You have you to believe. Go, everything's good. Yes. Everything's good out there, but, but, but you know, it's not, guy, or, you know, like you got your, your same sound guy and usually he goes, okay, kick drum. And you hit it for about 10 seconds. He's like, okay, snare 10 yeah. seconds. Okay. But when you're doing the kick drum for five minutes and he hasn't moved on yet, you're like, we got a problem. There's, <laughs> there's something wrong. No, the worst was, and I noticed this about halfway through the show the uh, normally if someone messes with gains during a gig, it, knowing that I'm on in ears, and in fact the entire band is on in ears, if you if if a front of house engineer or anyone messes with gains, you will get my full wrath as soon as the gig is over because that is like you do not do that to people, right? Like we're trying. To be, to, some people don't know they they need to be strongly talked Str to 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 explain why that's a bad thing. <laughs> and for those of you listening that don't know why it's a bad thing, allow me a moment to explain. <laughs> when you adjust the gain at the top of a channel, 
and I, I don't care if it's actually at the top of your channel strip, but that's how I think about it. The cha- you know, the, the, the sound comes in, the gain affects everything, including all of the aux sends and the sends to, to, you know, your, your reverb units, your effects units, as well as the sends to the you know front of house. When you adjust gains, it changes the levels everybody has in their ears. They took the keyboard and the worst was they had the, uh, the keyboard was split into two channels and they didn't realize this, but they were adjusting the gain for the left hand of the keyboard, <laughs> not the right hand. Oh, no. By the end of the gig, the right hand was at plus four. The left hand was at plus 38. Because they're like, why can't we, why is it not cutting through? And Correct. They just kept going. They just kept going. Oh, and no. normally I would be like livid and furious. But as I noticed this happening during the gig, all it did was made me feel like, oh man, this poor person. You're just like, kind of laughing. <laughs> just laughing. And, and like, I just felt so bad because it's like, I know that you don't know how to fix this the right way. And there's nothing I can do here other than not like overly bash the drums and like also ruin your mix. But, yep. <laughs> but I still need to play the drums. Like if I yes. stop playing the drums, that would be a worse problem. And so I like, oh, it was well. the only time in my life that I didn't, and it just, that I didn't get furious. And I noticed that halfway through the gig, all I'm doing is adjusting the pan <laughs> on the keyboard to keep moving it to the right as the left gets louder and louder. <laughs> yeah. Some, sometimes you're just like, well, he, he had enough embarrassment on this. It, like, I don't need to embarrass him. <laughs> I, I don't need. And I did after the, like, you told actually, him what was happening d- days later, I said, you know, there's one thing, please know that I'm not upset with you about this, but if you do this again, know that when you adjust gains, it affects people's ears. And they were like, oh, oh my gosh, of course that. it does. Yeah, yeah, right. And it was like, okay, great. Problem solved. Like, it's it's all good. We suffered through that Christmas cake. New Year's was better. The, all the Hedwig run was better. So, yeah, it, well, it was it was great. Yeah. Speaking of in-ears, we talked about this. This this would have been a couple months ago. You had, you had a guy on talking about in-ears, and I had that question for you about do your ears change? Uh, Cause I've got a, I've got a mold of, of, for my ears, you know, I've had it for six, seven years and I went to an audiologist yeah. and I said, Hey, I'm noticing like the fit's not right. And they said, Oh yeah, you're over time. Your ear will sh- slowly change shape. <clears throat> and most of the time getting bigger, like your ear will get bigger, the older you get. Oh. And so I was noticing for the last year that my, there was a lot more bleed coming into my, like my right crash symbol. I'm like, why do I hear that so loud? And so I sent it, I got a new mold made yep. and I sent it into 64 audio and they're going to rebuild my entire in-ears into a new mold and like clean everything up and a uh, very affordable service to do. I changed my, my plates, my custom artwork and everything. So if yep. anybody out there that's had a, a, a mold of your ears on, on custom IEMs for more than four or five, six years, you might, you might consider getting a new mold made. So, um, I'm curious. This actually all makes sense to me. I, I, I believe you that your ears changed, and it. Right. Well, it, we'll find out, right? Yeah, I may get the new ones back and be like, yeah, never yeah, mind. it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. But, but that, I mean, that makes sense, and it does make sense to update these things. I'm curious, and I realize cost is probably the biggest driver of this, but at the point where you're gonna like bother to get new molds made and do all that, right? Why not There's the ears? argument to be made, well, <laughs> keep the old ones as a spare yeah. set and buy a new set of ears. It spends six years, et cetera, et cetera. Did, did you go through that thought process? I, I did, yeah. And actually, I did it on my last pair. I, I have two very expensive pairs of in-ear monitors, and I'm thinking, well, I don't want a third one. Uh, I, I went through okay. a period there where where the the band and my, my personal business, like, real estate world i sell real estate was like i was having the best year i was ever having having and the band was making more money than i ever thought was possible in a cover sure. band world. so i was like give me the most expensive iems you have <laughs> and so yeah my i have a18s uh they're, they're like 3600 bucks i think from, oh wow uh, 
from 64 audio. So I love them. I love the way they sound. And also now I'm, I'm more responsible. I have a child and I'm like, okay, that was, you don't need three pairs of, of plus $2,000 in ear monitors. So I, I really like these. I said, let's, let's go this route. It was a 200, it was like 200 bucks to have them rebuild the whole thing in a new mold. So I was like, let's, let's go that route and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the A18s folks, I'm, I'm, I'm looking here. These are 18 driver earphones and you're right. They're, they're like three grand. So yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. They're, they're yeah. great. And they got that apex, um, that, uh, artificial membrane in them where you're, it, it, it keeps like listener fatigue down. Really? I, I just really, I just really like them. And I have before that I had I had a JH Audio 16s, JH yep. 16s before that, and I love those two. Those are like my backup ones that I actually wore on New Year's Eve because my my 64 audios are in the mail. So yeah, got it. Okay, that makes sense then. Yeah. I, I, okay. How do you like the <laughs> the JH 16 V2s? So I don't have the V2s. Is that, you, you they, just have the regular 16. I have the, these the would, first this would have round. been like eight years ago or yeah, something okay. when I that first round. So okay. I'm assuming yeah. they probably made it. What, do you know what they changed on that? I don't. And I'm just curious because the only set of JH audios that I have are the JH audio Layla's, which yeah. are built to be a reference monitor. Yep. And I used them for podcasting for a really long time. I could never use them live. I tried using them live once and it, it was just it, too much low end. Like yes. there, the, the, not enough articulation and, and it's a shame. Cause I mean, like, like you're, I mean, like, like I think they're $2,700 or something. And, yeah. and Jerry made them for me and it, like, they're, they're, <laughs> they're great for what they are, but they're but not, not for live, <laughs> not for live. Yeah, exactly. It, so your, your 16s, I know they're they built to be used live and they're good. Okay. I'm yeah, glad a lot that. of low end too, like uh, not that much, but if you're a right. bass, bass player, drummer, and you really want to feel that, that's the big complaint a lot of people have on in ears. Uh, if you're a bass player or a drummer, like yeah. the, the, the universals with just the three drivers, you're, ah, that low end's just not. So yeah, if, if you step up to something like that, you'll get a lot better low end. Out it, of it. it makes yeah. a difference to have yes. something that is tuned for the low end. Yep. Um, and, and that's what I was most impressed by with the, the dual driver, all clears that I tried because that <laughs> it's crazy at three ninety nine for the, what they call their dual XBs and, uh, and they're, I think it's three ninety nine Yeah. And they're, they're specifically tuned. They're like, they yeah. have a normal dual driver and then they've got this dual XB and I've used them for gigs and it's like, you get that low end. The word thump is the wrong word, yeah. but it's a roundness to the low end yeah. that, that makes a difference when you're a drummer or a bass player. I, I actually sent, uh, after that episode, a buddy of mine was looking to make his first investment in in-ears and I sent him, I sent him all clear. I was like, dude, check these guys out. I want to know. I heard nothing but good things and I think he's got them. So I, I got to check out and see, see I'm what curious. ended up happening on that. I'm curious to hear. Yeah. 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 I, if people that I know that have, you know, listeners and friends that have gotten all clairs have been really, really happy about them. And yeah, I, I couldn't be, I'm so stoked that we finally found like a budget friendly yep. IEM that's custom and they feel good. And uh, you know, all of those things. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 So I, I want to get back to your New Year's gigs because you said you played two gigs. Is that right? One no, was, so I, no, oh. I had uh, the, let's see, I, I played two different times. I had three gigs in December and then one on Got New Year's, it. just one gig on New Year's. Got Day. it. But, okay. All right. But I went through that. Uh, I'm sure many of our listeners out there know that, that feeling where the universe just reminds you uh, to just kind of stay in your lane a bit where we had this show where uh we we've been doing this maybe five six years now where the friday saturday after thanksgiving we do this mini yep. tour around iowa we play the surf ballroom in clear lake which is where buddy holly um played his last show and then took off and crashed in a plane oh one of yeah. the most famous venues you don't it, ever it fly home from that gig right well here's the weird part uh his the gig before that was in fort dodge at the laramar ballroom and then they drove to clear lake played the surf ballroom and then crashed in a plane our gig before that was the laramar ballroom and oh, wow. Dodge. we oh, made wow. sure to not get on a plane after yeah. that but but this is one of the most iconic venues in the united states definitely iowa had like 1500 people buy tickets to see us there this incredible show then we went to des moines iowa the next day sold out this the one of our favorite venues in the state called woolies uh 800 people just like 
firing on all cylinders the whole weekend, made great money, just got new fans, sold a ton of merch. Then the following weekend, you know, you're high off of, of this top of the line gig. We went to play a private party where there was 150 people there in a room for 2,500, this uh -oh. giant room. Uh, I showed up, uh, I tested positive for COVID that day, and I'm sure we can get into this, but I still had to show up and play the show. I felt like death. We got in the room. Uh, it was so dry. There was no humidity in that room that oh. the first song, our singer starts singing this really easy song and just struggling on, on oh, song one. No. And he's looking at us like, what? So I'm thinking he lost his voice. How are we going to make it through this? We go to the next song. Our keyboard player takes lead. He starts just losing his voice. We go to the fourth song. Our bass player takes lead. He's losing his voice. I get to mine. I start losing. There, there was something going on with the air in that room that by the end of the show, none of us could sing. None of us could talk. It was probably the worst show we've ever played in sounding wise. And there were 150 people there that could care less that we were there. It was like, it's one of those moments that we've all had. If you've played music long enough, that reminder that no matter what you're feeling now, you are you are not going to feel that for long things will change and that is up or down it was a great reminder all right well it's the new year and you can take the stress out of meal planning and set yourself up for success here with our sponsor factor and their ready to eat meal delivery kits you can skip the grocery stores the prep work the cooking fatigue and instead get chef crafted dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. They've got over 35 meals to choose from each week and different options like veggie, vegan, protein plus, keto, calorie smart, plus over 55 weekly add-ons. So you get a ton of different options to kickstart all your resolutions. I used these factor meals last week. I ordered a bunch of them because I knew that I was going to be back and forth to the theater with those, you know, whatever, seven shows, eight shows in seven days, whatever it worked out to be. It was a lot of shows and a lot of rehearsals. And I just needed to know that when it was 30 minutes before I was going to leave, I could just grab a factor meal, heat it up, eat it, enjoy delicious food, and then still make it to the show on time. And you get to skip the overpriced takeout trap, right? Because factor is cheaper and way more delicious than takeout. And you get those chef crafted restaurant quality meals delivered right to your door. And I mean it. They are ready to heat and eat in just two minutes. Great food. Fresh, never frozen. And in addition to ready to eat meals, they've got cold pressed juices, smoothies, energy bites, extra protein, veggie sides, and more to keep me energized during those frantic times. So here's what you get because you're a Gig Gab listener. Head to factormeals.com slash gig gab fifty and use code gig gab fifty to get fifty percent off. That's code gig gab five zero at factormeals.com slash Gig Gab Five Zero to get fifty percent off, and my thanks to Factor for sponsoring this episode. All right, so Mike, you were saying uh, a little earlier that you had you 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 had you wound up playing a gig with COVID. Dun dun dun. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is like I, this is a thing. I wound up doing it back in the in the fall. It, you know, I I wasn't feeling great during Tech Week for that theater show. I I didn't know that I had COVID. I don't. I think I didn't want to know until <laughs> like after the fact. Yeah. It, it, so I'm curious about because I think everybody, if you play in a band, you're going to run into this at some point. I, yeah. I, if you haven't already, and and even if you have, you're probably going to run into it again. So, yeah. oh yeah, it's it's one of those things where I I was I was feeling kind of um, lead, you know, we just got done with those shows I told you about. Uh, come like Wednesday, Thursday, I just wasn't feeling very good. But my wife and kid had it before me. My wife had tested uh, negative for positive, so I'm just like, ah, it's just something. But sure. then that morning of the show, uh, it's a Saturday morning. I woke up and I was washing my hands. And I went. Uh, wait, it's that weird moment where all of a sudden you can't smell and, and you oh. realize that you can't smell. I'm like, I can't smell the soap. What is going on? And so take, take a test and go up. Oh, there it is. It's, it's pretty darn positive. And I was feeling terrible. And so, you know, every band's going to have their different protocols on what happens. I, yeah. of course, um, I, I, get in the band text thread and I say, Hey guys, uh, just a heads up. Uh, I'm COVID positive. What do we want to do about this? And, and they all said, 
listen, this is this is a private party that's been on the schedule for a year that this these people have put in all this work to make this private party happen. They are going to be having it and they have paid for us to be there and and they will not be able to find a replacement tonight. Right. And we have to play this show. Uh, and, and it's great. And not only is it for the company that has hired us to do this, so their party will go on, their company holiday party will go on as planned, but all four of our band members can make the money that they thought they were going to make. Yep. Our three crew members will make the money they thought they were going to make. Our three front of house people will make the money they thought they were going to make. And so it, it came down to me saying, I got it. And they said, uh, just stay away from me. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, as right. Long as, as long as you can do it. I, I stayed away from everybody. I, I brought a mask. And when, when me and my drum tech were doing some stuff, I was wearing a mask. He was too. Otherwise I was, I was back there smiling away, having the time of my life, even though I felt like death. And then, you know, I just, it's, it's a moment that take, take, just take COVID away from, just say you're right. sick. Say you have the flu. You, these are conversations you're going to have to have with your band. And, and if it's something that is cancelable and, and the group feels strongly about it, then you can definitely do that. But there are moments where you like, you, you have to play, like we, we've canceled two shows in 16 years, you know, like we, you yeah. contracted us to be here. We have to be there, right? As long as I can physically play the drums, like I got to be there, right? I, and I know that sounds probably kind of kind of weird, uh, but at the same time, like I don't, if you think of the alternative of of calling them and be like, sorry, sorry. Oh, no, I, <laughs> you I know? listen, I, I get it. I played a gig with food poisoning two, two years ago. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I Maybe last year. I And it was a benefit uh it, and it was you know there was th this was happening right yes, it's and going so to happen. <laughs> like the morning of the gig i wake up and that's when this hits me i had had oysters two nights before and i i read on the cdc site like I, evidently there's like eight different types of food poisoning i had no idea <laughs> no and, uh, yeah and and it's like oh if you have this then it takes this long to kick in and it's like oh no kidding i thought it was like right away it's, nope oysters were like wow. 30 hours or something it was like yeah well that's kind of it i had that's oysters right when i had them friday night <laughs> and hell here we are sunday morning and things are second. <laughs> terrible yeah and uh and so we played at like 2 p.m that day and up until about noon i was like i don't think i can leave my house like without <laughs> causing a major <laughs> major issue but then it was like you know what wait a minute, I think I can do this. I think I, and I did. And I went and, and, you know, you like this gig was happening. It was a benefit. It was important. The band was into it. It turns out we didn't know this at the time. I, I, I actually made a joke on stage as we were getting on stage. I had to go get something from the green room and I ran up, I was, I was about to leave. And our, uh, one of our band members, uh, I, I, it was our guitar player. I, I, he he did not know that he had COVID in that moment. But he's like, "Hey, can you get me a tissue or something from the green room?" I'm like, "Sure." I'm like, "Just." So I handed it to him. I handed him a tissue, and I'm like, "Just it, for your little touch of COVID." And he laughed, and we laughed. Yep. And then the next morning, he texts yep. us, and he's like, "So it. it turns out, you know." But I mean, we were all in a bar. Like, you yeah. have to assume that someone there has someone has it not sure. just covid but also rsv and the flu and, and uh, yeah, what, whatever it is yeah so um yes we, we've all played gigs when we're like under the weather and all else being equal probably would choose to stay at home of course but you don't have that choice and this is why like you hear about touring productions having insurance for every show yep what you described and you're on a large scale for a cover band, you're fairly small scale if you compare it to like an A-list oh, touring yeah. band, a stadium band, but it's the same kind of thing. You know, the band is expecting to get paid. The patrons are expecting to see the band. It, you know, the crew is expecting to get paid and all of that lives on your shoulders in that yeah. moment. Yeah. And, and so anybody out there, like picture what you're, what, picture something next year where it's like your biggest show ever and you're, you decided to sell tickets to this theater in your town and you blew it up and you're like, we sold 800 tickets. And then that morning you wake up with COVID. Like what, what are you really going to cancel? Yeah. You know, you're, and, and it actually begs, it, it makes us think a little further. Like we're to the point where we're actually going to go into the studio next Saturday and spend a weekend off and we're going to play through our entire set and individually track everything that we play 
and we're going to start throwing that into our Ableton sessions. And if our, if our bass player is sick and can't make it, we have his bass tracks. And, you know, and have you ever heard of the band Sleep Token? No. They're, they're, they're fairly new over the last couple of years. They are, they are blowing up. They're this weird version of metal, but then they'll like break into R and B. It's, oh. it's one of the most intriguing bands I've heard in a long time, but they have gone from nothing to just mega stars and they, they're from England and they played the biggest show of their lives at Wembley. They Whoa. sold out Wembley and the singer lost his voice in the, in that day. And for about the whole middle of the show, he couldn't even sing. And, and he basically had to have the crowd sing. And we're sitting here back. We were talking about it on New Year's Eve. Going, you guys are all to click tracks. You have mega backing tracks. How, how did you not prepare for this to have your vocals in, in the mix ready to go? Um, because I'm sure I'm in the minority here and I love stirring the pot. But if I go see a band. No. I love stirring the love pot. love stirring the pot. What? Dude, no I'm telling you, if I go see a band. <laughs> And the singer loses their voice. That's not cool. That's I. Uh, I saw uh, the Foo Fighters in Iowa, and and I love the Foo Fighters. Dave Grohl lost his voice and was a mess for a three hour show. And there was this moment where it was very cool because he's like, "We're like, we love you, Dave. You're you're sure. fighting through it, and and you're gonna do it." And he had these heartfelt speeches. But in the end, it was probably the worst show that the Foo Fighters have ever played because. Yeah. The voice isn't there. And so I'm the proponent. Not that, that Dave like, Grohl has a great, yes. like live, his Correct. singing voice is terrible. Correct. It, it's it's better on records, but but live, it's awful. But it but the energy that that band pours off the stage yes. is, is, is the show. But, yeah. but you know what I mean? Like you won't know with technology nowadays, you won't no. know if a singer is actually singing or not, if you're in the crowd. And I just think that the way technology is like you, you have to embrace these things. What if our singer loses his voice for our biggest show we've ever had? What, what is our backup contingent plan for that? So we're, we're going to, we're going to start moving forward with uh, being able to maybe click a button and, and a bass track shows up or, or turn that off or click a button and the backing vocals show up in the, in the mix. So I don't know, man, we might have to revisit this someday. Oh no. I, I like, I remember seeing, I was at South by Southwest and decided kind of last minute to go see Keith Urban play. Okay. I'd never seen him before. I am so glad I went. He put on yeah. a fantastic show. He's a hell show. of a guitar player, right? Like, he's, he's a great like, guitar yep. player. He's a good performer, like all of the things. But about, I don't know, two songs into the gig, I realized there's no <laughs> bass player on stage. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> What's going on? And I, I tweeted about it, not knowing anything. Right. Yes. And suddenly m m that tweet at the time, like blew up in the Keith urban circles because none of his fans knew that his bass player was sick uh, and they all got really worried. And they're like asking me what's going on. I'm like, dude, I have I, no dude, freaking I don't idea. Even know. I'm Does standing outside in know. Austin. Like, yeah. He's like, it's, is this just a thing? Like maybe the keyboard player is playing. Like, I don't know. I can hear bass. And it turns out his bass player yep. is his music director, right? And so it's like, okay, now what's go now? I'm invested. At yep. This is at yep. long after the gig, and I'm I dig in, and it turns out, yeah, the guy was very sick. Took, uh, the, you know, I don't know, half a year off from the band. That happened to be the first of wow. the, those gigs, so they hadn't really said anything about it. But what they were doing was playing his yep. bass parts from the prior show. That he had played because they play every show to a click. Totally. And they just record. It's just ready to roll. Ready to roll. That and, happened to us. We opened up for yep. Dustin Lynch outside yeah. of a Minnesota Vikings game and their bass player was not there. And they they just I we were talking to their their playback guy. He goes, Yeah, I just clicked this button and the bass track shows up and no big deal. He couldn't make the show. So there's the bass guitar. And there's guess the what? 99.9% right. of the people in the crowd do not know, do not care, had the time of their life. But then I, there's the musicians in us going, hey, wait a minute. Well, <laughs> and it took me a couple of yep. songs. Like, it didn't dawn on me immediately. I mean, again, I'm not, you know, I'm not the biggest Keith Urban fan, so I didn't know yep. who to expect to see on stage. If I was going to see... The, you know the food fighters or, favorite band, like, yeah, exactly but they, but they weren't it was just like i'm going to see a band i know who the principal you know the named entity is and that looks like him so I, i'm in you know and it looked like a band on stage until it was like hey um wait a minute what's <laughs> Five, going six on strings, here? six strings what the heck <laughs> what the heck yeah and, and uh, you know so that was it but you know but, dave like the the thing i've learned of being in a cover band for 
20 years or however long it's been that, that you have to come to terms with the fact that any decision you make shouldn't necessarily be about what you think a musician in the crowd might care about. Oh, you, never. It's, it's does the, does the general audience care about this extended weird breakdown that you're going to do of this B side song? They don't, they, the general no. audience just cares about having the time of their life singing along. They don't care if, if you're just, if everyone's tracked and just the drummers playing live, they don't care because they're not going to know. And, and, and I just think that's one of the things we always have to remind ourselves as cover band artists, as just musicians in general, like what does the audience want? Not what do we want? What does the audience want? I totally agree. Yeah. It, yeah. We could come up with exceptions to that rule, yes. right? Oh yeah. Anytime. It, but the, the, in a, if you're playing general business cover band songs, you are not there. Like it, it would be different if you were going to see or I were going to see a Rush tribute band, right? Yes. <laughs> like very different. Okay, like I expect to see them playing the parts, but I'm not alone. Everybody yes. in the room the, is. The, yeah, it, it, it's like one of those graphs where it goes. Does yeah. uh, does the audience care? And then it'll be like yes or no. But then it'll be like yes because it's a Rush tribute. Band. Because it's a Rush take tribute. It into a whole. It'll take it into a whole another. That's a whole thing. other thing. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. But it, otherwise, yeah, nobody cares. It's they are they out there? Can they dance? Is the time consistent? Does it is sound the, great? Is the mix good? Can you hear the vocals? That's <laughs> yeah. it, right? You know, <laughs> vocals and kick drum. That's it. That's, That's what need. you need. That's it. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, I, I just I remind myself because I will find myself making snap decisions about well we got to do this and we got to do that and I just stop and go, dude, is that what just what I want to do? Yeah, or does the of course it's care? what yeah. you want to do. Of course, of course, I, dude. I play and in a cover band called the Pork Tornadoes that plays girl songs, girl pop songs. Do you think <laughs> that's my favorite music in the world? No, but like, do I have the my time of my life playing it? Yes, I do because the audience loves it. <laughs> so that's a, I. I think this is something that is often lost on people who play in bands, especially people that have either have never played in a cover band or even an original band. Like, unless you're the songwriter, you are likely going to, and I can say this as someone who has played in both cover and original bands. There are songs I've played in both cover and original bands that I don't care for. I would never listen to that. One of our biggest songs when I was in, and I, 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 and now that we're into this, I know that I talked about this particular song years ago on this show. I was in a band and go figure in like the college ish years. Yep. The band was huge, like all originals. And we, we were, we did really well. If it weren't for personalities and all yep. of that, the band would have, would have probably taken off, oh, but yeah. it didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we played for, you know, crowds of, of thousand plus, which was amazing. There was this one song that every freaking person in the room loved except one person. And that was <laughs> me. It was me. I hated China Buddha fat man. It was this stupid song that we wrote and people freaking loved it. And Dave, you could have you could have said you could have stood there and been like, "No, we will never play this song again." You could have done that. I, I, and I but think I may have even started down that rant at one point. <laughs> but it was like it, everybody loves this stupid song, so of course to it's going it. to be on the set list. And over time, I learned to love playing the song. I never actually yes. got to like the song. You don't have to like the song, but playing it, playing the song was great because. Here it was like people went nuts for this tune yes. and it's like, you know, this is our song. Like, even <laughs> though I don't like it, cool. <laughs> that's pretty freaking cool that look, all those people are singing along to China Buddha fat man. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard, but they showed up. They yeah. came here for that. They're the reason that song's the reason why people are here. Exactly. And have to play that happens to us. We, we had that breakout with the Tennessee whiskey cover, right? Yeah, we, never, right. we didn't even really plan on adding it to our set list we just said ah let's do it we're in the studio and it blows up it's at 10 million views on youtube and it's just this it's been streamed over a million times or whatever and we've been playing it every single show for seven years eight yep. years and there's been those talks of like eh, maybe it's time to retire it and it it ultimately comes back to we can't we cannot yes. let go of this song so oh, you do the things that you need to do you you evolve it a little bit we added this weird little 
guitar breakdown in the middle and we've added these cool fun starts and stops where everybody's in you you just have to make it fun to play even if you don't necessarily enjoy it like you said whatever it is that makes it fun to, or at least enjoyable yeah. to play and listen you know for the people that don't like playing sweet home alabama and yeah. mustang sally and all that you may be sick of the song <laughs> I, like I, although i would say like sit down and actually listen to the original recording of mustang sally there is there is a master class going yeah. on there in terms of groove however i get it you've played it a bunch you're you, you're tired of it sure yeah. but you're not playing it for you yep. and if you're if there's no one out there enjoying it then also don't play it but assuming <laughs> yeah. that you are playing it for a crowd that wants to hear it Yes. Forget about what you feel. Look at those people and just get the enjoyment from them. That's their moment to give back to you. Yeah. It's let a reciprocal them. thing, man. It's, yeah, it's let circular. Them. If, if you do yeah. something that they like, they will give you the energy that is the reason we are all on the stage. And That's it will it. just go, it'll just circle all it's, the way to the stars, man. Yep. Yeah, let, but you got to let it happen. Yeah, you got to. <laughs> if you get into your own head about, oh, I hate this, you know, I can't wait till it's over, then you, you're you choosing to just ignore all yes. that. It's like, well, I mean, if you're going to play it anyway, you might as well let it in. <laughs> we've we've uh, all been to a show where you've you've caught on to some bad vibes on stage oh, or yeah. someone looks like they don't want to be there, and all of a sudden that is all you can focus on, and it takes you out of the show as an audience member. So that's – yeah, you, you play that song, and you pretend like it's the best song you've ever played and that you love it so much. And Absolutely. Then, then we are good to go. <laughs> then we're good to go. Yep. That's it. You got, but you've got to pretend – Yes. Even if you have food poisoning or COVID <laughs> or COVID and, uh, <laughs> and you got 103 degree fever, just going, oh, let's get through this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It happens. It happens. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You, you told speaking of, uh, well, not speaking of, I'm going to segue us to gear gab here because I love gear. And, uh, you told me about a thing that you are using now. Uh, I believe for the sub snake that you send to your drums. Is that right? Yeah, kind of this this started off so we we bring all of our own we're fully contained as a band. We okay. I have all my own drum mics, singers have we have all our own mic stands, all our own microphones when we show up at a a club like Hard Rock Cafe in Sioux City. Sure. We hand we hand them a whip and we go, "Here you go. Front of house, Got you take it. care of it. We are we are ju you don't need to give us anything." So, your monitors are something you mix. And Correct. you control the gains yep. for your monitors and you give front of house, if front of house messes with gains, you have no idea. Yep. We use a splitter snake. Uh, so there's a patch bay panel on the front. Everything goes into it yep. and then it splits the signal. One goes into our Midas 32. That is con controlling of our mixes that by the way, stays the same from the last show. So why most wouldn't of the it? time, yeah. most of the time you're right in the wheelhouse and then we hand a whip to front of house. But what has started to happen is we've just got, we're playing these much bigger stages where the IEM, we call it the IEM rack. That's got all of our, our IEM wireless in there and, and the patch bay sometimes can't always live where you want it to live. It has to be way over here. And now we've got all these cable runs running everywhere. So our, our guitar player started doing it. He found this system. It, it, it's called cat's ass, right? It's called elite core. Elite I love core. I I, yeah, no, I know the elite core folks. We call they it make cat's great... ass. Is that not what it's called? No, cat's ass is a perfect way. <laughs> let me let me spell this for you folks. Get technical it's... for me because I don't know what it is. Yeah, no, it's C A T dash S A S S. Cat sass. Sass. But cat's it's cat's ass. ass. It's and, cat's ass. And so tell people what this actually does. So instead of let, let's picture let's picture you're our singer and he's got um actually let, let's just use it from a drum perspective, right? Sure. I, I have this drum rack to the side of me that that uh, contains an interface for our, I run the Ableton com computer, so it's got, got it. an interface from my computer to this little interface. Then out of there comes a left and right, uh, which is our tracks, our backing tracks. Then comes another output, which is our click. Then comes another output, which is our audio cues to, to tell you when to come in and out of the song. That is just one little rack sitting right there that we would have to run four different XLR cables yeah. From that to wherever the IEM panel is, and that's that's a lot of cabling. That is a lot of long XLRs, depending on where you're at. And so this CatSat system 
basically is a box. It's a, it's a breakout box that has one end of it has a box and it's got four, um, XLR, I guess you'd call it females that this box lives in my rack. The four females are already the, the, those four inputs I told you about are already plugged into that box at the other end of the box is an ethernet connector. And I have a 50 foot long, one heavy high duty ethernet cable that can run wherever I want it to on the stage, wherever the IEM box is. And then it comes to another breakout box where then it now breaks back out to four males that goes bam, bam, bam into the, into the front patch bay panel of our IEM. So instead of running four fully long XLR cables that you have to pack up every night, now you're just uh, cabling one ethernet cable for four channels. And so our entire band has been doing this. We have, I don't know, call it 30, uh, probably 32 channels all in all when you're ca- counting like talk back mics and, and yeah. click tracks and everything. And so 32, that, what is that? I don't do math too well. Eight. Is that eight? Yeah. So it we have, eight. we have eight, we're running eight cables total for 32 channels. And now keep in mind that works out so well, not only just showing up and setting up and keeping a clean stage, but when you're doing that, that opening gig for that big old national, but you want to bring all your own stuff. uh, It's just so much easier to use that. And so, yeah, uh, we're to the point where I think all of us now, once I get one more breakout cat's ass in the mail, I think we're going to be fully on those eight ethernet cables and they are heavy duty. They are, they're one of the coolest things that I think we've invested in uh, gear wise lately. That's really, really smart. I, 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 I need to get a set of like one of these. Yeah, just, just buy to, one. Just to have and and start experimenting with it, gigs, and and then I'm sure I'll wind up with four. Well, you, and keep you know. in mind they're they're customizable too, so they they can be whatever ends you want on the end. You can run MIDI through that too, because yeah. we run our through our interface. The Ableton hits hits and then we send midi clock out to everybody's pedal boards mm. uh we send midi out to our smoke geysers our cold spark machines that is controlled through my ableton so that can now run through cat's ass uh and just through that high high heavy duty uh ethernet cable so it's it, it, i don't know i i don't think that well, that's not how my brain works but the rest of the band's more on the the technical side of things and once they started using those i'm like well I have the most inputs of everybody. I need to get some of these. You need you know? to get on on board with it. Yeah, because even oh yeah, no, I can already see where this is. This is brilliant. It's just Absolutely a cool brilliant. thing, and I don't know. if yeah. I'm assuming this is what it was intended for. I mean, you you see yeah. a lot of those acts where there's just a pedal board walks out on stage for the main act, and they plug one cable in, which is yes. how how it works for my my singer's guitar uh, uh, pedal is is a pedal board one cable goes into it and then underneath the pedal board it's already got all the breakouts plugged into where it needs to go so he can he can have an opening act on stage where he has struck his vocal mic which is a wireless mic and a pedal board tech walks out pops it down plugs one cable in and pops a wireless mic on a stand and and he's ready to roll so it's it's if you're ever in the situation where a stage is moving a lot this is the way to go it really is oh no this is brilliant Uh, yeah and and it's one of these breakout boxes runs somewhere between 175 and 275, depending on how you're configuring it and, and yep. all of that. So it's not going to break the bank, uh, but uh, yeah, man. Oh, I'm glad. I, I'm glad we talked about this. This is yeah, well, how that's many. Really so how cool. many like do you bring your own mics most yeah. of the time when you're gigging? So you're you're, you're kind of doing the same thing. You've got a, like, yes. a sub panel and you're like, here you go. Here's all my stuff. Yeah, here's all my stuff. But it's yeah. like. Here's all these, you know, here's yes. this mound of cables. Oh, <laughs> hopefully you plug them in. Right. You know, uh, yeah. Kind of oh, thing. they're not labeled. Okay. Sorry. You know, <laughs> well, no, the yeah. one with the, the scratch on it. That's number yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. The one, Let me look. the one where oh, no. the paint's chipping. The, that's two. yeah. And this one, this one's has a black end, which one? Oh yeah. That's going to be the third. Yeah. You know, that's the snare. Yeah, exactly. The only thing we're having to work out though now is that the, the one problem that evolved is that now the IEM rack can go away from me because it used to have to be connected to my computer oh, with it with a six foot cable yeah. <laughs> it was like, so now that can go wherever but unfortunately that iem rack also brings me my my hardwired monitor mix yeah so we're gonna have to maybe find a way to cat's ass that back and forth uh because because that you know those two xlr cables can only be whatever 50 feet long or yeah get a lot you don't really want them to be too long but uh that's the one thing because i'm hardwired just I just out of habit. Why wouldn't um, not, you be? You're a drummer. You're not going anywhere. Why? I do like why to have stand one up more and move around? But yeah, I get that. Yeah, yeah. But why have one ba- one more battery you got to manage, right? 
Yep. Like, and if you're playing, you're playing to a click track. I had it happen. The last time I was on a wireless pack, oh. uh, my wireless was going in and out while I'm trying to follow a click. And I was like, never again. I'm not, I'm not doing this. You're just nope. guessing. It'll go out for three seconds. You're like, well, then find, what? Out, find out how good my timing is, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's fun when you're in the studio and like, you know, practicing, but yeah, you don't want to have to deal with that. Uh, the elite core folks also make great uh, monitor, like hardwire monitor belt packs. So you may oh, do need, they really? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you might want to, you might want to check into that too, because they've got some good stuff there uh, that I've used over the years. So sweet. Yeah, yep. that's awesome. Yeah. They seem elite core seems to be where we get a lot of our stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's heavy duty stuff is yep. really what it is. Like it, it's built to be, it's built to have the crap beat out of it. And, that, and that's the point. You you can say all you want that. Oh, you know, I keep everything in cases. And but sure you, you guys know how it is when you at when you two get in on, the morning, two in the morning, somebody's helping you load out and they don't know what's in there. And somebody's stepping on cables. You, you just oh, yeah. you got it. We learned that a long time ago. You ha just, just buy the best, buy the most heavy duty stuff. You're you're going to eventually get it anyway. You might as well get it right off the bat. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might as well spend the money now because yes. you will spend it later. And you've also wasted the money that you're about to spend now. Yeah, That's exactly. Right. Exactly, yep. man. Yeah. So I, I'd be interested to see what you think uh, if you end up getting some of that stuff. I'm it's sure been, I will. It's been awesome for us. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it looks, uh, looking on the webpage, it, it's obvious that, like you said, it's all customizable. You sort of build, yep. you build what, whatever you need to send over that, that cat five cable and you're good to go. This, the, the, the standard, if you just go with the standard, it's it's two feet on each end. The, the breakouts have two yep. feet of XLR, four of them female, four of them male, and then a 50-foot Ethernet. So, like, really, I didn't oh, yeah. customize anything. And they, if you want to, then they'll label things for you. They'll color code them. They'll, they'll get as intricate as you want to go on that. Yep. Yep. <sighs> awesome. This is why I love doing this show, because I get to learn all these cool things, man. It's great. Yeah, well, we were just talking with the last band, speaking of gear stuff of... Our, our opening act on New Year's Eve, we were showing them how we have two two computers that have our show on it, fully ready to go on Ableton, just in case one goes out. And they were like, they kind of got wide eyed. They're like, well, we just have the one. I'm like, well, yeah, but what happens if what it, happens? What happens if it goes out? And they're like, yeah, <laughs> you could just see the wheels turning. I'm like, I, I have a back. I don't know about you, Dave. I feel like you're gonna say yes to this, but I have a I have a backup for everything that I have on it, it is at every, I have a backup kick pedal, backup snare. I have backup heads. I have backup stands. I, I just, you just, you have to have it. Cause the minute you say that it, nothing's going to happen, it's, it's going to happen. Oh, a hundred percent. I, yeah. And I, I do, I have the only things I don't have a backup of are my kick drum. Yeah. Uh, you know, the toms are sort of backups of each other. Exactly. Right. I've always got a backup snare. Always. My, I carried backups of everything except a kick pedal. And one night in, we were, I was playing in Austin. It was this club that we played at pretty regularly, kind of in a strip mall, you know, whatever held maybe 200 people or something. This one night we're there and, uh, it's like nobody in this room and maybe 20 people in this, in the club or whatever. And I do not like to smoke weed when I play. I hate no, it. No, me neither. Yeah. You're a, How, con you're a control freak, aren't you? Correct. Yeah. Yes. So am I. We're yeah, the same. Right. We couldn't be in a band together. No, absolutely not. <laughs> not only, I mean, we would have, to, it would have to be a band with two drummers, but even still it wouldn't it, work. Even still it doesn't work. It wouldn't work. That's correct. And so we had, it was a three set night after the second set we're out in the parking lot because the other guys in the band loved to smoke weed all the time. It was fine, whatever. Like, I don't like, I'm okay. My feelings on that are as long as you can play, I don't like whatever you want to do is fine. It, well, as soon as it impacts the gig, that's when I have a problem with it. Well, isn't that called like, I don't know if this is a real term, but a uh, state dependent learning, like state where, dependent learning. Is yes. that, re is that a real thing? So like I say it is Dave, I, I will always, every time I've played a gig for the last decade, I am, I am, two beers in and and maybe like sipping on a whiskey like so i know i know where this spot is where yep. if i play if i play sober or beyond that line it's the whole show's messed it's up and very different. different and you're yes. just i'm the same way like if i have never done it so i can never try it <laughs> right so this was after the and i'm kind of the same as you it's weird doing these theater gigs where you're not supposed to drink yeah. on stage sometimes that may or may not happen uh, but yeah. um but uh this you know this particular night 
two sets in, nobody's in the club. And I'm like, fine. You know, I'm hanging out with the guys. They're they're smoking a joint or whatever. And I was like, ah, let, let me have some. And it was much stronger than I expected it to oh, be. Yeah. I was like, okay, perfect, great. We go in. <laughs> the club's and, and full before now. we go in, like the moment that I'm like coughing my lungs out, and this is probably the last time I went on stage high, and this is like 20 plus years ago or whatever. This bus pulls up. <laughs> of course it did. <laughs> and fills the club with people. I have no idea. It must have been like a I don't know, a bachelorette party yeah, bus exactly. or something, whatever. And I'm like, oh my God, like what just happened? And so 75 people pour out of this bus into the club. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And well, you started that by talking about a kick drum. Did you break your uh, yes, kick drum pedal? Yes, I go into the club and the kick drum, like we start playing and in the middle of the first yep. song, oh, yeah. the spring on my kick drum pedal breaks. Yep. And so I have no kick drum pedal and I'm playing <laughs> like floor eye. Tom as kick through to yep. get through this tune. And this is a blues rock band. Like it has to, it's three pieces. It's bass, drums, yep. guitar. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so I'm like tr doing my best. And then between songs, I'm like high as a kite and also need Thinking to figure that out. Everyone's looking at you like that everyone's course. going, what's the matter with him? <laughs> Super paranoid. It's just like a, the worst disaster I could ever have had. And so I somehow, maybe somebody had a pair of pliers. I took the, the, what was left of the spring and like wrapped it around the, 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 yep. the pedal and made it work. But now if you're a drummer, you know where I'm going with this. Now the pedal is like five times as tight Oh my God. because the spring has gone from being, you know, it's half the length and now I've stretched it out and it. It, the remainder of that night was just like I had to like you know lean so hard on the thing and plus I was still high and all these people and it was what a disaster so now I always have an extra kick pedal in my car yeah yep I mean and just and I actually I, I had a I woke up out of the middle of a dead sleep last night that that I thought to myself I go why don't I keep those next to me why why are they in my case off stage yeah. like so i i just woke up last night and go oh yeah i'm going to keep my snare and my kick pedal just sitting right next to me you know so that my drum tech can just run up and go like you know instead of yes. oh what's the matter oh okay where did we put it you know instead of one of those moments yep yep i'm having one of those moments right now believe it or not uh where i don't have a backup i use logic as my mixer to to like do this show and for the first i've been doing this with logic for every podcast i do so all three of them since 2020 and i see a message i've never seen before yep and it says an audio unit plugin reported a problem which might cause the system to become unstable please quit and restart logic which makes you think this entire show is going to get lost no i can see that it's recording because i use a different <laughs> app to record but like at the end i like to fade in the music i don't think um, no. i can do that don't do i don't it. know I don't know what's going to we'll happen. Sing, we'll, here, we'll sing us out. We'll kind of we'll, we'll we'll gonna gonna, we know the theme song. Us man. Out. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, yeah. No, I have backups of everything. And what I often keep secret from guitar players is I keep uh, uh, one of those Joyo uh, amp simulator pedals. Yeah. In my, I have a, a thing that I call my just in case, which has all yep. of the extra stuff in it. I have one of those in there. I have a separate mixer in there. Like, I have all kinds just of things. In case. Just in case, if a guitar you, player's amp blows, well, I've got your solution right here. You do the worrying for the rest of the band, just like I do. me, man. I do. Yep. I, if I'm in a store and I'm like, oh, just here's 40 batteries. I'm just going to buy them. You never know. Somebody might need some batteries. I, I just, that's, you, you're, you're stuck with the idea that if you don't do it, no one else is going to do it and it's going to ruin the show. Were you a Boy Scout? <laughs> no. I, well, oh. no, I was for like two, three years. I was a oh, wee yes. blow. I was okay. a weeblow. Yeah. So there I've you go. gotten a weeblow, I think. Yep. Same. Always yep. be prepared. Is always that... be prepared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which isn't all that different from always be performing, you know? <laughs> you know, but that that's a thing to think about. I mean, and our, I, I joke about it. Our band is very prepared. I mean, all, we are still in the camp of mega huge amps. Our bass players got two different eight by 10 cabs. Our, our, our guitar players got four amps on stage, diesels and, yeah. and we run and we run the sound through them. Uh, but at the same time, they're both still direct, you know, okay. like so that okay. if, yeah, if yeah. something goes wrong, they're sending multiple signals and, and we have the ability to just show up where our, our singer just brings his pedal board and that's got that's all it. his vocals and his guitars and everything. And no one would know the difference. So we're in that weird middle world where we're like, 
we love technology, but we love being a rock band. You know, yes. like it's just, it's, we're just, we're living in that middle world for now and seeing what happens. The silent stage is a weird thing. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I mentioned at the beginning of the episode that the, th there were sound issues all night with that Rocky horror thing that we did on Christmas. I think if people like if, if the musicians on stage had had, instead of being on in-ears, if they were on monitor wedges, that each of them had their own yeah. instrument coming out of it, then all the sound tech would have had to worry about was getting the vocals up yeah. over that and not yep. trying to blend in everything except drums. And so silent stage, it, it's cool and it can be great, but you've got it. Like it requires a whole other yes. level of understanding, not just from the one person doing sound, Every musician has to treat their instrument differently when you've got that silent stage going. Dude, and actually you just reminded me, have you ever heard of uh Here Come the Mummies? That band? No. No. They're like a they're like a funk funk band that that dresses up like mummies. They're like a ten piece band with horns and they're they're huge. It must be a Midwest thing, but okay. I went and saw them at like a two thousand person general mission floor indoor show and the drummer had a full acoustic kit, but his snare was electric. Oh, and the minute that I honed in on that, when I found a spot where I was standing to where the snare just sounded different because I could hear, I could hear his acoustic drums like through the air yeah. and through the PA, yeah. but I couldn't, I could only hear the snare through the PA and that got weird for me. That all of a sudden went, Oh, okay. Wait a minute. You know, it's, it's, it's man, it's such a tricky business to find the right. Yes. You know, you don't want to just be all amps on stage, but you also don't want to just be fully relying on the technology of it too. It's oh yeah. Like, oh, if, if you're like, if you're playing clubs and you have a silent stage, having, uh, you know, mains as left and right is not enough usually <laughs> right. because for the people that are standing in front of the stage, all they're going to hear is drums and yep. like this weird sort of separated <laughs> you know apparitional instruments coming from yep. behind them almost and usually the people right in front are your most favorite diehard fans <laughs> yeah so you need to put now center fills <laughs> yep, in exactly a and it's fine like that's fine but you got to know that that's how that's going to be. So, well, yeah. and that's where we're at. We play so many different, we're in, we're in a small club. We're in a giant arena. We're in a, in a corporate event. We're in a wedding, we're yeah. in an outdoor festival. We have to be versatile. And that's really how our gear has evolved. Is just like, I have, I, I bought one of those, uh, Roland, uh, VAD 506, the, yeah. the, the wood shells, but the electric, it's all electric. Yeah. Yeah. I know Th those, those actually play yeah. really well. I still don't like it. Like I, I've played, I'll I get play it. these very small rooms with that full kit. It looks like a real drum set. Yep. No one knows the difference, but I still don't like the way it feels, but you know what? You make those sacrifices for, for the betterment of how the room is going to sound. In yes. fact, the other day I played my acoustic kit, but with electric cymbals. It, oh, interesting. This one room, it had this low ceiling right yeah. where I was at. And I said, we got to take that out. And so, you know, you, you learn something. Again, it to take it all back, it's not about you and what you want. It's about the betterment of your band, which yeah. then makes it for the betterment of the audience. You can't be selfish about that stuff. If if somebody says, put up a drum, sh a cymbal shield because it's we're on a small stage and you go, no, I'm not putting that up. Then you're you're the problem. Unfortunately, you're the problem. You know? Yeah, no, no. Cymbal shields are can be really, really helpful. It, yes. A lot of people think, oh, it's the kick and the snare that are the 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 volume problem in in tight rooms. It's like, well, maybe, but the first thing that's your problem is cymbals. Ride cymbal and crash cymbals can over dominate yep. a room, and uh, yeah. And our dudes sure. use those uh, Neumann Neumann vocal mics, and they yeah. just oh, oh god. I mean, they sound beautiful, what? but they cymbals are just going. Oh. See, they shouldn't be doing that. That's a, we, you know what? We're definitely, it, it, this we is not, the, this is not, well, we also need more episodes. So, uh, you, you're coming back. Obviously you got, well, you got to have it. You got to put, you got to bring on like five guests and then put it up to a vote to be like, I don't like that. Mike Schulte guy. Don't bring him back. You That's gotta, right. You got to get the, remember it's about the audience. It's, it's not about, about the audience. Game, okay. But I get the veto vote and, <laughs> and, and I want to have you back on to have Paul. this conversation. Paul, yeah. who did you like hearing the most? Who said the nicest things about you at the beginning That's of the show, right. Paul? Okay, That's I think it was right. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> no, we definitely want to have, I definitely want to have you back. So yeah, for sure, man.
yeah. Well, yeah. and like I said last time, man, it's just it's just I I love the the very small small few music podcasts that I listen to that are out there that are doing it consistently. You're one of them, and it's just it's just great to know that every day I can open up my app and and see a new episode and just feel like my people are talking about stuff. So yes. thanks for continuing on and absolutely, and, and for everybody well, out there for listening, you know, and thanks for being a part of continuing on. I am going to uh, click a button that says recover here in logic, and I'm going to see what happens. I uh, Can you still hear me? I, I think gotcha. you can. Yeah. Logic oh recovered itself. Amazing. You know what that means? That means we can play the music <laughs> as the episode ends. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us, Mike. This is amazing. And uh, I definitely, like this will, you'll, you'll be a recurring this will be a thing. I love sure. it. Thanks you for got three me. words to share, man? It's always be performing. That'll do it. Thanks, man. That yeah, dude. Thanks for having me. I hope that was good. I mean, we actually kind of touched on all that.